Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming here, and I would like to thank Hassan for inviting me to do this talk. So I'd like to talk to you about travel photography and what I think is a problem it is facing today. In the world we live in today, where if you look at the news, lying has become common practice in the world of fake news, I believe we need to bring more honesty and transparency into what we do. We hear a lot of discussions uh, about photojournalism, about street photography, about the ethics of these things. People talk a lot about the boundaries that these fields have. When it's about travel photography, things seem a bit more general. Travel photography, you travel, you take photos, actually no one really cares about what you do. Yeah? And I believe we should maybe try to place some boundaries around travel photography and define what, is, what would be the ethic of travel photography. When you do research online about the ethic of travel photography, the only thing you find is people talking about, is it okay to take photos of people? Can I come and stick my camera in someone's face? I think this is just a cultural issue, a cultural issue that most Western people have. Yeah? In Asia, things are a little bit different. In order to define the ethics of travel photography, I think it is important to understand the notion of authenticity. As travel photographers, we are always seeking what is new, what is interesting, something unique and authentic, how to capture the essence of a place. We are almost like historians or anthropologists trying to study the environment we go to. So, authenticity something worthy of acceptance or belief as conforming to or based on fact, conforming to an original so as to reproduce essential features, made or done the same way as an original, not false or imitation, real, actual. The problem when we talk about authentic travel is that the authenticity doesn't exist in, term, in, term, in terms of time, in people and culture. People and cultures are constantly evolving. And due to the progress in technology we have, things go very fast. The people who used to work in fields using buffaloes are now using tractors. And things move very fast. So when you think about a photographer traveling around the world with the idea of capturing an image which for them is authentic, is only capturing an authenticity based on th things they have seen or read in the past. Cultures are intermeshed and ever-changing. There exists neither a special or temporary boundary around a culture. Authenticity is a box into which the traveler crams what he wants to see while ignoring the complex of reality. So why does this matter for us travel photographers? Well, I believe it matters very much because every, photo every travel photographer should try to convey a sense of truth into their image. As Wikipedia tells us, and we know the internet never lies, travel photography is a genre of photography that may involve the documentation of an area's landscape, people, cultures, customs, and history. The documentation of an area and its people, that means being an objective viewer, not interfering, not trying to show things the way they are not. So when you think about this, and spend some time browsing through images online, I feel there is a strong disconnection between what travel photography should be and something that, unfortunately, we come across too often. Oh, that's a nice image, isn't it? Yeah? There's a, a monk in a temple, a bit of smoke around. It's quite pretty, yeah? Oh, we got that again. Uh, is, is it like a festival or something? I mean, do, do monks do that often? Uh, again, is it like something they do in group or something solo? I don't know. Uh, maybe I'd like to go. It's nice. Huh? I'd like to go there to take some photos, maybe. Oh, it's cool. Oh, look, they even do their cleaning like this. We smoke around them. Hmm. Interesting. I believe there's something really wrong happening in the world of travel photography today. The fact that it's a relatively easy medium to pick up. Basically, you go buy a camera, you buy a plane ticket, and you start doing travel photography. This makes it 
a very saturated market. There are a lot of travel photographers. We're exposed to hundreds of travel of images every week, every day, mostly if you work in the field of photography. That means it is maybe more and more difficult for people to make a name for themselves. Uh, so people are trying more and more to show themselves, and even if that means recreating images that are not authentic, but are known to be popular. It's the race for travel photographers about who will be the most popular, and that is, I believe, killing the creativity. Shouldn't we, as travel photographers, be seeking originality in our work? Because authenticity always evolves and changes due to the fact that people and cultures always evolve and change. Our photography, our work, should constantly be evolving, trying to seek what we think is authentic and reproducing something we have seen is nothing authentic and is even less original. It is untrue to the people you photograph and untrue to the people viewing your image. It's not like Louis, you're lying, but sort of. You may give the wrong impression, and even though photography is an art and is subject to anyone's interpretation, as a travel photographer, I believe you have the duty to show the world the way it is. And yes, photography is an art, and art should be breaking boundaries. Anyone is entitled to create a conceptual image following a sense of aesthetic or conveying a deep meaning into their image. But can we call that travel photography? If this is a staged image, starting from a created idea and using models, it looks closer to commercial photography to me. But who I am to tell you that, yeah? You have a camera, you want to capture beautiful images, this is still a free world. I myself in the past have been st staging some images. No, what I think the main problem is in this, in these images which are almost copies and reproduction of past images which lack of originality, how can they still win photography competitions today? So let's have a look at some of the recent photos that won photography competitions. All right, Smithsonian finalist, 2014. National Geographic UK, 2016. That rings the bell a little bit. Oh, look at that, image resource competition, 2016. How's that? Oh, that's nice. Sony World Photography, 2014. That's pretty. Uh, I've seen that man before. Fine Art Photography Awards, 2014. SIPA, 2015. Ooh, Sony World Photography Award 2017. That was a month ago. So you see a lot of this type of winning images, winning travel photography competitions. And that's why I'm very proud to work with Asan and Travel Photographer Society. When you look at the photo selection they have done here, it's really unique and original work. When you see all these photos winning competitions and being published, it scares me. It literally scares me. I'm afraid that it is sending the wrong message to any amateur, any emerging photographer. Basically, if you want to make your passion for photography, if you want to make a living, if you want to make a career out of it, well, you better start saving money. Because the fisherman over there charge $15 a day for his shot, yeah? So, get ready for it. You probably need a fixer to organize it for you. These competitions are not saying we are going to reward a unique work, something original, a unique way of looking at things, who can tell us a beautiful story into a compelling and engaging composition. Instead, they say, go and shoot what is popular if you want to make it. Yes? Thank you. Fake it till you make it, basically. <laughs> Talking about authenticity, this is quite the opposite. It is fake. It is not real. These things are not happening. They used to happen. They're not happening anymore. And as a photographer, as I said before, you can come up with a concept of creating an image due to your interpretation of life or some idea you had. You can build a photography following a dream you have, and if you want to stage it, paying models to do it, it's fine. I guess the first person, the first person who took a photo of this fisherman and his comoron, it was, it was, you know, it was a beautiful image. He probably won a competition with that, but that was before. We have seen that before. It's time to go beyond that. The same thing is happening today in the world of wildlife photography, for example. Uh, last month, I was reading an article about the foul practice 
of wild owl baiting by wildlife photographers. An article from Film History, a wildlife photographer. So apart from mentioning the fact that when you feed the owls, you could change their behavior, and this is not good for them, yeah? He says, you are getting a fictionalized photo as this owl never hunts in this particular way. In other words, the deceit is obvious to the trained eye. Who is judging this competition? Shouldn't be people with trained eyes. You're thinking the name of the competitions that we saw before, National Geographic, Smithsonian Magazine. Shouldn't these people be experienced travel photographers? Should they be experienced in traveling in Asia? Most of these photos were taken in Asia. Have they ever traveled before? I don't know. And look at the polemic that came around Jimmy Nelson's book, Before They Disappear. Jimmy traveled in many parts of the world to take beautiful images, very aesthetic images, of these tribes uh, in their traditional costumes. The problem is he received a lot of negative feedback from these very communities who accused him of showing them the way they are not. These people are not disappearing, they just change the way they live. By staging images, you are not true to the people you photograph. I mean, before they disappear, he was probably just looking for a catchy title. But I know what you're thinking now, yeah? You're a good photographer, you got skills. You're gonna travel vacation. You're gonna go to see the fisherman there, the monk in Bagan. You got that super lens that can blur the background very much, yeah? You're gonna impress everyone with it. So let's have a look at how that happens. So what are we gonna do today, Steve? Oh, let's put a novice on the floor reading a book. That's gonna be cool. Uh, I feel it's a bit too boring. What should we try now? Uh, I don't know, let's have them clean the floor. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know. Are we okay to do that? I don't know. Let's do something else. Oh, the keys, they're nice. Let's have them jump in here. Oh, I think I've seen this image before. All right, all right, Steve. We need to come up with something new, original. I know. Pole vault. Why not? Yeah, no one has done that before. Wow, this is amazing. Wait, 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 Steve. I think we went a bit too far away here. I don't know. I don't. I run out of here. I have to go. It's my son's birthday today. Birthday. Oh, balloons! Let's have them throw balloons in the air. I mean, what is this? Yeah? Is this, is this real? What's going on? The problem when you do that is you're still being untrue to the people you photograph, the actors. Yeah? These people do not do that. And you are being untrue to yourself. I am an educator, and I care a lot about people's ability to create, to innovate, to evolve as photographers. By staging images, your level of creativity is close to zero. You are restricting yourself to shoot into the boundaries of your original idea. You are not pushing yourself to get out of your comfort zone. You travel in Asia, you are not opening yourself to any opportunity. Things could happen, someone will walk in your background, the light will change, things like this. You follow basically your idea, your model, your location. And it's gonna be very difficult to come up with something new. Where was I? Yes? We've got that here. But I think the sad thing about it is, as a travel photographer, you are not seeking what we travel photographers are seeking. The most important part and the essence of travel photography. The travel. Travel photographer society. Travel photography. There is the photography, but travel comes first. Yes, you can take good pictures. Everyone can buy a camera, learn about photography, camera settings, learn about composition. But do you know how to travel? Are you trying to capture something that has never been captured before? Are you trying to create original work? To listen to your own vision, to your inner voice, to be true to yourself when doing photography? Can you maybe contribute to the photography community around you and inspire people to create something new and unique. Are you trying to be an explorer in this world? Or maybe you fell into the trap of these so-called photography competitions that they want to make you believe that you have to be popular, you have to stage popular photos to make the difference and get a lot of likes on Facebook. Ah. Facebook and Instagram are best friends, yeah? 
You want to make it as a photographer. You need to have a lot of followers. You need to publish photos that people are going to like. It's very tempting for any emerging photographer to try and do that on social media. What these photographers do not understand, though, is that 99% of people watching your images have no idea about travel, have even less idea about photography. You could spend your time posting boring images of cute kids looking up at the camera with blurry backgrounds. You're going to have a lot of likes on your Instagram page. You could also maybe take photos of sexy women. People like sexy women. That would be popular. People like kittens as well. You like little cats, yeah? How about sexy women with little cats? <laughs> Guarantee success. Believe me. Following the trends, following what the general public is asking for, it's never been a way, has never been a way to create and develop art. Art has always been on the edge of the common trends and it's pushing people to constantly innovate. Staging your images will all not only restrict your creativity, as you will be working in your confined vision of the image you have in mind, but it will remove the traveling part. Remember, the journey is more important than the destination. By not staging anything, only trying to capture what is authentic, we can enjoy so much more the travel part of travel photography. We can enjoy the moments of true interactions with the people we meet and witness what I believe is authentic. We can enjoy the moment when, in the middle of the desert, after taking our sunset photo, we put the camera down and think, wow, look in which world we live in, how amazing this is. The moments that maybe you're lost in a village and you're invited to stay in these people's house and these people have nothing. And yet, they're giving you everything they have. The moments that make you be, become a humble person, realizing and understanding in which world we live in and what life is about. The moments I have learned some of the greatest lessons in my life. The moments I was being true to myself and to travel photography. Thank you.